is 10 a.m. and we are gonna take the bus out to the museum that we're going to for the day. So we're out here walking and we're following Denise to the bus stop. That's the plan. Interesting flag over there. It's Mexican American flag waving in the distance there. That is an interesting flag. And we're at some like little park here. And this neighborhood here by our motel is definitely what I would call gentrification. You have like these modern apartments and a poor neighborhood coming in. I saw this taco shop over here. I'm gonna go try it out. Let's see if I can find a breakfast taco. So I went ahead and got the breakfast taco, which is a flour taco here. Couldn't resist that one. So. Got my two breakfast tacos. I'm gonna try them out while I wait for the bus. So this is what my breakfast burrito taco looks like. And it's got potatoes, eggs, and cheese in it, so looks pretty good. We'll see, oh, and eggs. I guess it's because of COVID, the bus was free, so that's a bonus. Except you do have to wear a mask on the bus, so we are wearing a mask on the bus going to downtown Austin. It's like a bird hotel over there, so that's kind of cool. Big old bird hotel here in Austin. We're entering in the University of Texas area here. I could see over on the left, I don't think I'm gonna get a good picture of it, but I saw a really big stadium, which you would expect for the University of Texas. But it looks like a nice campus. The stadium's up ahead now. Uh, yeah, it's right up ahead. Let's see if we can get on the curb. There it is, you can see it's pretty huge stadium there. Passing by the Alumni Center here and more of the university area. This is a pretty big campus and the bus goes right through the middle of it. We go to the Bullock Museum and apparently we're gonna go see a guitar, electric guitar exhibit, so. Well, the history of the guitar, so ending with the electric guitar, but everything all about the guitar. That's one of their exhibits this year. Okie doke. There so we go. right now for the museum, we are going in and we had to reserve our time. So we reserved our time for 11 um, to get in. And we're going to go here, spend some time here, I guess. We got until 5, so we got some time to spend here at the museum. We're here inside of the Bullock Museum. And gotta wait for Denise, who has our tickets. Have a cool medallion thing here. AJ standing in the fire of the medallion. He's burning up. This costs $13 for adults, Denise? Yeah. It was $13. And kids were free. Okay. So we're starting our museum adventure here with a big saddle, with a big fancy buckle, with the Guerrera and sons from McClellan, Texas. Why are they, the Guerrero so influential? Well, they sold mules out here in 1908. Way back to the 1400s. So this is a map of the people that lived here in the 1400s. And then of course, in 1492, the first Europeans came to the Bahamas and by the 1500s they were here in the texas area looks like the french exploration started in the 1600s is what it's saying here so in 1682 was the first french explorations to the story here it didn't end well because in 17 1687 la salle who was the first european to settle in here died of murder and this is the remains of the ship the bell that fell in the mississippi river and was shipwrecked this is what's left of it they found it so his boat got shipwrecked they traveled north trying to get back to canada and he was murdered along the way 
this is a model of what the bell the bell looked like when it was fully operational and again this is what it looks like now some other artifacts that have been found along the Mississippi here. I think this is all cargo from the ship. Oh, it was all cargo from the ship that was inside of the ship. Interesting. So five of those people survived, but then the area was taken over by the Spanish. And so in 1722, I believe, it was taken over by the Spanish. And this is talking about the slaves that came over in that time. These slaves apparently came over. These shackles are from the 1780s. Which is interesting because I didn't think um, the Spanish kept slaves. They kept indentured servants, but not slaves. So I thought that the first Spanish came in the 1700s, but they actually came in 1632 to start building missions. And this over here is talking about all the different tribes that used to be here. You have the Jumano, the Comanche, the Tanakawa, the Kanakawa, the Wichita, the Caddo. So yeah, there was a lot of the Apache. There was a lot of tribes that were already here. So in 1750, you had the British, Spain, and French influence. Then by 1774, the French were out. And then it became, in 1783, what it's was it? still Spanish, but the United States is a presence. Yep. And then you got... 1800s, French. The French, French was back. In, but only on the edge, right? Uh-huh. They're sandwiched in the middle. Mm-hmm. And then in 1803, with the Louisiana Purchase, the United States purchases what's now the northern part of Texas. Yep, they're out. Uh -huh. And then in 1821? Uh, Mexico, um, new treaties clearly yeah. defined. Uh, well, Mexico gained independence in 1810. Yeah. 1821 is when it finished, so that's why it's yeah. saying that Mexico was replacing Spain. Going from the 1820s into the guitar exhibit here. So lots of guitar music in here. Lots of old guitars, different types of guitars. That's a very eight neck guitar, that's crazy. Fully playable, multi neck guitars. There's a guy playing it on the video. Several guys playing yeah. it. Yeah. What was inside of a guitar case, and now I know. Mm -hmm. That's what's inside of a guitar. How much? That echo. Mm -hmm. Also have old guitars. Like this is a sitar. And of course you have the banjo. The mandolin. Balilaika. Baroque guitar. A lute. Probably the oldest right there. Oh, here's a Nayatiti. And a ten bore. Version. Version, okay. And there's Chet Atkins guitar right there. And Sam Houston. We're gonna start our Texas history level lesson here with a statue of Sam Houston. Sam Houston in early colonization of Texas. So this is talking about 1835 when Santa Ana sent troops in to quell the Texas rebellion that was happening. And of course, Texas's statement on the matter was, come and take it. And so they armed their own army. The battle lasted seven months. And the war. now the war has lasted seven months. And in 1836, the Texans won and became an independent republic. And over here we have a replica of the facade of the Alamo. Okay. 
So Texas became a republic from 1836 to 1845. And basically the reason why it became part of the United States was because after the war, they owed $1.2 million, but their annual income was only $500 a year. So they were highly in debt. And by 1845, the Texan money was worth nothing with no credit. But here was their um, presidents. They had Sam Houston as their first president, and they had Mirabeau Lamar, and then finally Anderson Jones. In 1845, Texas became a state after there was a planted rumor that the Republic of Texas might align itself with Britain. And so in order to avoid that, Polk urged Congress to press for statehood. And so it became the 28th state of the Union. As it is now, Texas was a largely agricultural state and cotton was a major th crop in Texas and that required, of course, lots of slaves. So in 1861, when the Civil War broke out, or what they call here a rebellion, um, Texas joined the Confederacy to protect slavery. Um, so, in, on June 19th, 1865, um, Union General Gordon Granger came into Galveston, Texas, and officially declared Texas free of the Confederacy, as all the Confederate generals, the last Confederate general was General John Bankhead, and he had surrendered. And with that order on June 19th, um, General Granger had um, freed all the slaves. And so now we have Juneteenth, which is an official federal holiday now. So after the Civil War, the period of Reconstruction came in, but all the leaders were still ex-Confederates. And so even though the 13th and 14th Amendments were passed, that guaranteed everybody the right to vote. Texas did not guarantee the right to vote for black Americans. And so, yeah, all men, yeah. But they didn't consider black people all men. And so even though they swore an oath to the federal government under Andrew Jackson, Andrew Jackson was sympathetic to their cause and let it slide. Celebration of the new state constitution of 1876, in 1882, Texas started their new capital building along with the Goddess of Liberty. There's the statue here. And the model, the mock-up model is in front of us here. This is um, a little tribute here to Bob Bullock, who the museum's named after. And he is, of course, known for the term, God bless Texas. So that was his quote. From here you can... From here you can definitely see the medallion a lot better. It says, born around the campfires of our past, the story of Texas. Due to the reconstruction laws, you got what was known as the Jim Crow era where white Americans suppressed black Americans. And this is an outfit of a Ku Klux Klan member. And unfortunately it was very common for lynchings, trying to put people in their place. So this is some of the ways that they enacted. First there was a poll tax, so you had to pay to vote. It was an all-white primary, so the only people that you could vote were for whites. They'd create literally literacy tests, so if you couldn't read, you couldn't vote. And there was voter restrictions, such as grandfather clauses, and ultimately violence and fraud, if they couldn't get it anywhere else. Douglas was not happy with the portrayal of African Americans 
and as cartoon-like creatures. And so he sat for photographs often, and because of this, he became the most photographed person of the 19th century so that he could improve the image of African Americans in the United States. By the 1900s, the Jim Crow laws had evolved into separate but equal in America. And so you had white zones and you had black zones. That happened until the 1960s. And then 19, early 1900s, a lot of Confederate monuments went up. Um, and that kind of solidified the lost cause, which was to really just show dominance over African Americans. Um, that even though they had lost, they were still in power. In 1909, um, Webb Du Bois came and he started the Niagara Movement, which eventually changed into the NAACP organization in 1909. And they would stage different parades and protests against the separate but equal clause. Gallery, you get more of the modern history of Texas. Texas has had lots of achievements, such as having mission control for the space landings. Um, lots of technology has been brought into Texas. You have many different things that Texas has done. By an exhibit here of the Texas Longhorns, whose Longhorns can grow up to 100 inches, which is about 8 feet for the longest of the Texas Longhorn cattle. Texas, of course, has been home to many movies, mostly westerns, but lots of modern films as well. This is talking about the roadway system here in Texas. As I said before, Texas was known in the 20s for its discovery of gasoline, and ever since, Texas has been one of the largest producers of raw oil in the United States. It's talking about the show of Austin City Limits. Austin City Limits, the TV show, has been one of the premier shows for music, and it's why Austin calls himself the music capital of the world. Texas Spirit Theater to watch a show about Texas history. Yeah, that's fine. We're walking to a hamburger place called P. Terry's, but I like this sign. I don't know if I'm going to get it here. But it says 2001 needs Benifer like chicken needs sauce. So I guess we need. And then over here it says we make. Fun of work, come join our crew. <laughs> Everybody's looking. But anyways, we're walking and looking for this hamburger place. Here, go over here at P. Terry's. Where we're gonna try the $2 burger. They're a local chain here in Texas, so Ooh. we're gonna try it out. It's yeah, kind of got a 50s theme. Neither was I, <laughs> but we're gonna try it anyways. Food came, I have to show you the patty. It's an interesting shape patty there. Interesting fry delivery there and like a triangle wedge. So that's what we're looking at. About the hamburger. It's a fine hamburger. I like that they did full leaf lettuce. It was, you know, mm -hmm. good. The hamburger. I like the fries. The fries were good. The shoestring mm -hmm. fries were, were good stuff. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna try their famous oatmeal cookie. We didn't try the shake because we'll be eating a good dinner today. Mm -hmm. Aww. <laughs> that came from AJ. He was not happy about that. 